And the uh, next speaker is Camille Roth. Uh, follow, follow the guides, disentangling human and algorithmic cur curation in online music consumption. Thank you. Thanks. So I, I'll be presenting this work with my colleagues, uh, Quentin Villermé, Jérémy Poirot, Manuel Moussalam, Thomas Louis, I'm Camille Roth. And this work takes place within the broader debate on the influence of recommendation on user taste and consumption, and notably it, its diversity. And what we want to speak of here is filter niche rather than bubble, in the sense that we ask whether user behavior actually influences the way algorithms or recommendation in general influences uh, their consumptions, rather than the other way around, that uh, recommendation influences consumption. And uh, we want to essentially show that there is no blanket answer to this question of the influence of recommendation on consumption. Oops. So the next slide. <laughs> Thank you. And um, so typically the, the reference point here uh, for algorithmic uh, influence is the organic one, that is when users choose autonomously to navigate content. And there's also another point of reference, which is the traditional human-mediated uh, recommendation that takes form in, in our case where we study music, con music consumption, um, the form of uh, playlists, human-mediated, uh, curated, uh, playlists, and also another point of reference which is interesting here and which we study in the paper is the, the case of radio programs, which is also traditional human-mediated guidance. Uh, the data we use is the data stemming from one of our partners, Deezer, so we have the complete listening histories of users, and we have those three types of affordances, the algorithmic access, the organic access, and the editorial access. And so we want to show that there are user types here. But first, let me step back a little bit on the literature here, the filter bubbles and this decade-old intuition that there are filter bubbles. Uh, there's been a lot of work on this, and the state of the art at the moment seems to say, okay, it's not very bubbly. I mean, there's a wealth of studies in different platforms with very different protocols that are relatively hard to compare with one another that seem to say, in general, okay, um, our algorithmic use is associated with an expansion of the horizon of uh, navigation. There are some exceptions, um, especially in the case of explicit preferences, that is when users specify that they want to subscribe to specific content, for instance, and in which case um, research shows that it seems to constrain users in uh, a smaller environment. There are also um, other um, exceptions um, in platforms that are actually similar to the ones where um, the influence of recommendation has been shown to expand the, the horizon. And so there is still a little bit of debate on whether it's bubbly, not bubbly. And we contend that one of the ways of reconciling um, these possibly conflicting results is actually to consider uh, beforehand user types and then describe the uh, possible influence of recommendation based on these different user types. So we, we specifically do that. We categorize users first. So we have those three affordances, as I said. Each user has a listening history, a proportion of plays, listening uh, uh, to songs that are algorithmic, editorial, or organic. So in a ternary plot, they have a position. We use a simple binning, which is based on k-means, to distinguish four types of users. I mean, the, the, most, of the, most of the access is organic, but still, there are some differences. Each dot is a user, and we have four categories. The very organic users, O+, plus, the organic users, green, the um, predominantly algorithmic, and the predominantly editorial, A, E, O, O+. Plus. On the whole, the distribution of plays, the activity on the platform, is relatively comparable for one category of users to the other. And for there, for, from there, uh, we consider uh, two dimensions of diversity. One which is relatively structural, which is based on the portfolio of songs that a user listens to, uh, namely, uh, that there is redundancy, I mean, comparing the proportion uh, of unique songs in the portfolio to the number of plays. So if it's one, that means uh, each song has been listened to one time. It goes to zero when uh, a user listens repeatedly to exactly the same song. It's a structural notion of diversity. I also introduce a more semantic one, but let's fo focus first on this dispersion, so this simple ratio. Um, 
when we distinguish what happens for the four user types and also with respect to each uh, access mode, so we see generally that dispersion is generally lower as a function of activity. Here, uh, each of the histogram corresponds to uh, a certain value of the S over P ratio, so the dispersion. So w when you go to the left, it's a, a lower dispersion. The darkness of the bars corresponds to a certain activity. And what we see also is that dispersion, so redundancy in a way, is lower for the main access mode of a given user type. For algorithmic users, for instance, dispersion is lower for algorithmic access, and so on and so forth. It's also generally lower, there is more redundancy, uh, for uh, organic uh, access, especially for the very organic users. And we see also that organic, the O users, they appear to have a lower dispersion even in the algorithmic access mode. So what this means is that in, in terms of the structural diversity, there are already discrepancies in the, in the different users and uh, also mediated by the different access types. The second one is a simple um, notion of diversity, a semantic diversity that is based on artist popularity. So let's say related to the characteristics of mainstreamness, niche artists, we simply compute uh, based also on the platform data, uh, four bins of popularity that gather exactly the same number of plays over the whole data set. So that means there are a few artists in the first um, uh, bin, a new one, which corresponds to the most popular artists and so on and so forth. And so when we simply look at the access modes that correspond to these, niche, uh, to these uh, bins, sorry, uh, we see that, yeah, organic access is the majority of access anyway, but still there are these um, uh, variations. Algorithmic access, for instance, seems to um, uh, favor the less popular artists. For the editorial access, it's the other way around. It's more popular artists. And the organic access is a sort of view curve that favors both very popular artists and uh, much less popular artists. And here, if we combine with the dispersion, we also know, uh, we observe, that it increases with less popular content on average, which is not unexpected. It means there is less redundancy for the least popular artists. What's interesting now, it's, we say is one of the core results of the paper, is to compare um, the behavior, the, 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 the let's say, the the relative um, uh, proportion of plays for a given uh, bin of popularity for each of the user types. So here we have the four user types, and we have a null model where uh, we compare the number of plays that fall in the bin of popularity with respect to what would have happened, um, uh, all other things being equal, uh, uniformly. Since the bins gather the same number of plays, it's pretty easy. So what we see here is, is the log ratio here, for algorithmic users, there is a tendency to favor uh, the middle popular artists. It's an increase over uh, the value zero, and so less for um, the more popular and the least popular artists. For editorial users, there is a tendency to favor uh, more popular artists, and, and it's monotonous. Organic users, it's the other way around. They tend to favor uh, the niche uh, artists, and O plus, it's a, it's a U curve. So we have this average thing. But what, what comes to be interesting here is to uh, differentiate uh, those phenomena, which are basically relative uh, importances of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the popularity bins, with respect to each access mode for each user type. And here we see that the, the, the influence of the algorithmic recommendation, editorial recommendation, or organic access changes with respect to the user type. For instance, we see that the algorithmic access, which is the dashed uh, curve, uh, tends to pull or be associated to uh, less popular artists in general, except for e-users. For the editorial users, the algorithm pulls them still towards more popular content. Um, for the editorial access, it's relatively monotonous, and for organic access, it depends. It depends also on the type of users. So to summarize a little bit this picture, what we have here is a landscape of different user types. Of course, these things could be refined, but what matters is that we can attribute, associate to each user type the specific subplot that describes the relative importance of a such or such access mode with respect to a diversity which is here based on popularity, and that those things 
are contrasted and do vary a lot with respect to this, to this predetermination, that there is no blanket uh, solution to this question. Um, some things I, I would have needed five more minutes to speak of, so I didn't include them in the, in the presentation, is our comparison with the reference point of radio playlists, and so to compare whether editorial recommendation on the platform is more or less diverse than the recommendation uh, if, uh, if, uh, uh, made by radios. And so we see that there is less dispersion on radios, more exploitation of the catalog, more redundancy, and still, there is a wide range of artist popularity. So the, the, the comparison is a little bit, a little bit mixed here. Uh, another take-home message is that the algorithmic access in general avoids popular content, except for the specific class of users, the editorial ones. And organic users, those ones are actually the ones in the middle here. So with a relatively balanced diet of use of the platform affordances, are um, actually those who focus the most on the least popular content. And so our hypothesis here, in terms of uses, is that these users uh, are possibly the most expert users. So that's something that would have to be confirmed, checked with possibly qualitative research uh, to know which those users are. But this also connects with something that is quite known in the qualitative literature on um, the use of algorithm, that there are different expectations towards uh, this guidance or such or such guidance, and that here maybe we have the users who are the most uh, acquainted with uh, the platform. They are using it rather than um, being influenced by it. And eventually, editorial access, um, and even more so for editorial users, and especially when we compare with the radio playlist, it seems that they uh, it fulfills a role that's traditionally ascribed to radios in terms of this mainstream exploration, the exploration of popular artists. And yet there is still um, more exploration, a higher dispersion. So that's about it for the results I, I'm going to be focusing on here. Um, the main take home message is no blanket answer, but more clear cut answers if we distinguish beforehand persona, uh, user types, and affordance uses. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Are there any questions in the room or online? So a question to you about the organic users who are polarized, right, in terms of niche and po uh, popular content. Do you think we could categorize them further? And tying to that, did you see the talk from Martin and you uh, earlier in the conference where they were distinguishing between expert and non-expert users, if I'm construing it very roughly. Uh, I haven't, no. But maybe you can give a few words about the specific thing here that you are alluding to. I mean, what, what would be key here? So, so better so categorization of the users in terms of adding this kind of dimensions? Yeah, so and that could be based on something that's not in the data, I mean, quantitative? But external? Yeah, so they found that people who were higher on musical sophistication, I hope I'm not misconstruing their work, uh, were more stable under preferences in medium, uh, short, and long term. Uh, if that's the case, then we should also be able to see that in the data without giving them surveys with musical sophistication. Um, and I'm wondering indeed if there are users who are new to the system who are exploring more or users that are stable. I'm not yet convinced personally that people who are experts are fixed certain notions, but maybe this is the case. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, this, this is a very good point. Uh, this is, I don't want to um, um, do a sneak preview on another paper that's going to be uh, presented at Izmir, but precisely we looked at also the um, so users on the long term, on two years, from the very beginning of subscription. And it was very hard to see uh, changes in behaviors in at least the use of affordances. What was remarkable is that uh, you had a quite fast and stable, fast, uh, quickly stabilized uh, use of, uh, in terms of proportions, you know, of the affordances. So the users started to be very editorial. They remained so for uh, two years. So that doesn't mean that it's not associated with a change in, in, in tastes, uh, exploration of more genres, but it, it felt like those classes of users at least are at the, uh, let's say, higher level in a way, in a, a level that is predictively uh, quite strong to predict the, what happens later as a result of the stability. Maybe we can ask you for that preprint uh, later. Thank you. Sure.
Yes, thank you. Um, there are some questions, online questions as well. I will uh, read one of them because I was thinking the same thing. Um, the diversity considered dispersion and popularity leave aside music-related aspects which can influence the listening behaviors. For example, artists' popularity is not equally distributed across different genres. Um, have you explored other diversity dimensions? And in case yes, what have you learned from those? And so, we, so in this case, we, uh, we decided, uh, maybe this is, per, this is an important precision, we decided to go against uh, using genres, uh, the, the, the labeling uh, that we also have in the data, because we thought it was very unequal and also relatively difficult to, um, to deal with, I mean, with respect to what we had here. Uh, we also used, um, in another uh, case, embeddings, uh, audio embeddings, to uh, assess the diversity uh, based on this, whereby we could also um, connect uh, some evolution, some, some influence with this uh, distance in that space. Um, and eventually, uh, yeah, for, for this paper, we decided to, uh, for a page limit maybe, to, to focus on the two dimensions that we, uh, we thought were already structurally and semantically the, the simplest and it's still efficient. Mm -hmm. But that would be interesting to, to work on a higher dimensional space, but also to make sure that some distances are not artifactual. That's, mm -hmm. that's what we were worried about. Yeah, I think I would also be interested to see if different types of users have different properties such as age and gender differences. Uh, yeah, very interesting, thank you. Yeah, and, and this was also stable. I mean, age demographics, we didn't see any um, strong differences, surprisingly, mm -hmm. but just to finish, <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you.